All right, we've been talking about this R squared stuff, so I might as well give you some mathematics for it. Uh, it's real simple if you really break it down into its component parts. So R squared is a statistic that we use to measure a model's fit. So how do we assess the accuracy of a model? The way we've been doing it for the past couple tutorials was using the R squared statistic. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to actually calculate that statistic using the longhand form Eh, to a point anyways, at least give you the logic behind how you calculate it. You will be able to calculate it after this quick little tutorial. So we're going to do that because we want to have kind of a, a uh, you know, we want to have the big picture of what's going on. We don't have to know the math behind it, but if you're going to use this as a measure for your model's accuracy, you should kind of know what's going on at least a little bit, right? So that's what we're going to do today. And the equation for it is equal to TSS, which I'll explain what all this means in a second, but let me write down what it is, divided by TSS minus RSS divided by TSS, which if you do a little basic uh, manipulation, TSS divided by TSS is equal to one, so one minus RSS over TSS. So however you wanna remember it is fine. What you want to do is figure out what all this stuff means, right? So what is TSS? It's the total sum of squares. That's what they call that, right? So another way to write TSS, you can do it in this format. You can say, hey, this, if I could draw it correctly, the sum, that's a summation mark, <laughs> the sum of all of the yi's minus the average y that's what that little bar means, squared, right? So let me break this down for you now. What does this mean? So the yi is the ith predictor. Think about it. You have some sort of equation like y equals something, right? You have these reg regressors on the right-hand side, and here's what you're trying to predict, the y. So the yi is the ith prediction, right? The outcome, the real value, though. So if I'm on the fifth row and I say, hey, plug in your values for all the regressors, what do you get for y? That's what that is. That's the exact um, answer. So if you have some sort of plot with all these dots, you know, and then you have a, a estimated model, a linear model that goes straight through like that, your actual value for that first, or that particular dot, that yi, so this might be the i, right, on the x-axis, that particular dot is that number. And then you're gonna subtract the average of all those dots. So the actual number here, the actual number here, the number here, the number here, here, and here, all divided by the number of occurrences I just said out loud, is the average. So you're basically saying, hey, how far off am I from the average for each every single point? How far off from the average am I? Square that number, that way we don't have negatives and positives, and that's what that is. That's the TSS, right? So we're gonna worry about the RSS and the TSS. We, we know how to figure out the TSS now. Literally, add up all the y's, all the y values, divide by the number of y values to get this y bar or the average or the mean of all the y's. Everything that you want to predict, even though we have this data, the data's here. It's not a prediction, it's real. Okay, so you have the TSS. Now, what is the RSS? RSS is equal to the summation from i equals one to n of the actual um, the actual y value minus the estimated y value. So the the little hat y hat i squared. So this is similar to this TSS, but it's RSS. So what's the difference? Let's look at it this way. TSS right is the actual numbers. I mean, there's no guessing here. You have the actual y predicted value or the, you have the actual y value for every single occurrence. You have that y, that y, that y, that y, and so forth. You can calculate the actual average of your training data set because you have the data. You can calculate the average. This is no joke, real. It's not fake. It is absolutely correct. That is what TSS is. And of course, the same goes with RSS, except we have some assumptions here. This y hat, remember, the hat is an estimate. So it's an estimated, right? So what would you estimate? So you take the actual value, the yi, which is right here. Remember, that's the yi. Your estimated value, well, here's your linear line. Here's your linear model that you just drew. 
that value is actually on this line. So take that value, the top one, subtract it from where it would be on the model that is you're predicting, square that. So there we have it, right? So we're think about that. You're going to do that for each and every one of these. Find the variability, and you're going to do um, the the basically the predicted divided by the actual, and that's how you get your R squared. Remember, we were getting numbers like 0 0.74, 0 0.81, and the higher the R squared, which makes sense. If you're predicting, took a look at here, if you're predicting a better result, let me pause frame here because I said something that wasn't true, so I'm gonna tell you what I meant to say. So as the RSS, as you can see, as the RSS gets a better prediction, in other words, if your Y hat value is closer to your Y I value, then of course that number is going to be smaller and smaller. And if that number is smaller and smaller, look at the ratio between RSS and TSS. As RSS gets smaller and smaller, that that fraction becomes a smaller and smaller decimal. So you're going to be subtracting one minus that smaller decimal, which will get you a higher R squared ultimately. Hope that makes sense. And I'll unpause it now. Now there's a caveat to this. Um, you know, the more features you add, now this is a simple example with just one regressor, but as you add more and more predictor variables, it becomes more complicated. But we talked about why adding more and more variables or features to predict or regressors to help you predict the why, it can be a bad thing because it adds complexity and it doesn't really gain you a whole lot. The example that a lot of uh, things will, a lot of literature will tell you is, you know, if you have TV adver advertising and you add radio you get a big increase in your sales right so hey you can kind of predict that right you add radio and tv you're gonna get a big, big um, increase but then you add newspaper and newspaper just adds maybe like 0.00001 percent more sales so was newspaper really needed for that model because i mean there's so much variability and there's so many uh, ups and downs and fluctuation fluctuations you might want to keep the model simple and just use tv and radio why add that third variable of course when we're, when we're going to deal with like real world situations, you know, you're dealing with like lots of variables, tens of thousands of variables, they really get complex pretty quick. You don't want to have extra variables if you don't need them. Hello, our community. A little uh, side note here. I create these videos on another channel and I show how I do it. And I want to show you guys, just in case you want to also create this other channel that I have and maybe you're interested in it. First of all, thank you for supporting my R channel and I appreciate that a lot. So in this channel, this is my my name, Mark Gingrass, just YouTube, just look up that and you'll find me. Uh, I teach how I actually teach R and other things like C++ programming or anything in general. How to use a green screen, how to use OBS, how to do it with a MacBook or a PC. How do I embed myself inside of that R studio? How do I quickly make my workflows better so I can switch between screens instead of edit in post-production using Final Cut Pro? So as you can see, I have OBS streaming tips and tutorials. I have Final Cut Pro tips. I have Content Insider. How much money do I make? How do I make money? What am I doing? What am I doing wrong? And then of course, you'll find some other tutorials that you might find interesting because you're also programming. So VBA, C++, some computer tips in general, and of course, much more. Supply chain and forecasting. You'll find it all. So if you appreciate my R videos and you want to learn how to make videos like that, maybe you like Python or you use the Go language or you have a C++ course you want to teach, check out this channel. I show you how to actually monetize and try to make money with it. And um, I try to be real with everybody. Uh, I'm only making about 50 bucks a month on YouTube. Uh, hopefully when you guys subscribe and like and share my videos on R, Hopefully, it'll turn into 100, and that'll be a pretty good deal for me. So as you can hear, my fan on my computer is malfunctioning right now, and I have to replace it because it's way too loud for using this Blue Yeti mic. So those are some of the struggles, and they're real. Again, I appreciate you guys helping me out.